Hi guys, welcome back to Mummy Cooks Homemade. So this is Friday, day in the life of my kitchen. <sighs> I've literally just got the kids off to school. So I'm just doing the breakfast. Caitlin usually has the bagel. She's the bagel holic, but it's got a butter, salted butter on. She's not going to eat it with no margarine on, and that's my fault. Because I've been giving them butter since I was little, so yeah, that's my own fault. And she'll have the juice and the, what you call it, <sighs> Greek yogurt. Amy has a pan of chocolates, a little pepper pig yogurt. So today is pack up day, but they don't want sandwiches. So my kids are so boring <laughs> that they want tuna, pasta, but literally tuna and pasta. That is it. So there's a little bit of mayo gone in here. That's all Caitlin, my oldest, will have is a tiny little bit. <clears throat> You'll notice I put some more in when it comes to doing Amy's. So it's literally mayo, tuna and pasta in a bit of salt. But they ate it all. If it makes them happy, I'm all for it. I understand they get fed up of sandwiches all the time. They do have hot school dinners as well. It's just on days when they don't like what it is. Right, so I'm just doing Caitlin's. More mayo. So this is definitely Amy's now. <laughs> so because Caitlin's pot's bigger, she's got the one with the bowl on the top. Or cup, if you decide to have liquids. And Amy's is a lot smaller, so she can get into her tub easy with a fork. Surprising how much you can squeeze into them little flask things. So they wanted a chocolate bear, and I'm knocking everything over. These bags are absolutely brilliant. They're from Hype. Not sponsored. <laughs> so they've got the pasta, a pack of crisps, and a chocolate bear, and a juice. And that is their simple packed lunch for today. And they both got the same thing. And then they've got their juices for the rest of the day. Amy will sometimes have a snack, other times she doesn't want a snack. Caitlin wants a snack every day. <laughs> so what did I make? Oh yeah, I made some cookies for the girls, some freezer cookies. What I mean by that is that now and again I'll just take them out of the freezer, they're in a roll, I roll them up into a sausage basically and put them in the freezer. Every now and again when they want one, I'll cut one off and bake it from frozen. I just add on another four or five minutes cooking time. So that's what I'm doing. This recipe is already on the channel so Steve can link that for you, whether he'll put it on a card or on the description underneath, I don't know. But you can change, once you've got the basics in there, I change the amount of chocolate I put in. I change whether it's white chocolate. I've got a bag of broken Smarties there. So yeah, you can put in whatever you like to add to it really, as long as you've got your basics. The sugar, the butter and oats. I don't even weigh the raisins to be honest, just throw them in. But yeah, we'll link this recipe. It's like with the ice cream recipe I did for you. Just have the basic thing and then chuck in what you like. Maybe with some cho cho chocolate orange pieces or popping candy. Maybe that'd be a good one. So I literally do do these last minute for you. The meal in this we had for tea last night. I put it on my uh, community post. So 
So yeah, I come up with these things right at the last minute. <laughs> but it really was good. We enjoyed it. And I was very surprised how close it was in the poll as well. I waited until 9 p.m. Then I took. Then I had to defrost the meat. So, yeah. I waited until 9 p.m. and then took the results at nine. I was quite surprised by the results, to be honest. So make sure, like with any baking and stand mixer, you, you do scrape down the sides of the bowl because otherwise it will still be there at the end of the process. So I have actually done a double batch. That's why you see me just haphazardly plonking the chocolate in. I have done a double batch myself. But what will be listed will be a single batch. So if you want a big batch like me to go in the freezer, then double it. So this is not an expanding cookie in the oven. So I do leave this a good size when I roll it out into the sausage. Because once you cut it, that's the size that it's probably going to be when it comes out the oven. So if you want a, a nice size cookie, then leave it a good size in that um, cling film. And this, before you even think of cutting it, before you even think of doing anything, you need to get it into that sausage shape and then into the freezer for a good hour. So I double wrapped it to protect from freezer burn. Gives you a bit more stability, I think, when you're doing that. So there you have the initial shape, that's all you need. So here's me an hour later. I've cut directly off the, I'll call it a sausage. I've cut directly off it. All you've got to remember is to take the cling film off. I remember I've got two layers on it in a minute. Just wait, I go back to the first one. So, you see all the bits in it. It's absolutely gorgeous. Amy's favourite cookie. There we go. Look, I've remembered to take them off. <laughs> the second layer. So I'm just cooking for, I'm not bothered about the shape. They're not there to impress anybody. So yeah, they're as easy as that. The instructions for cooking will be below as well. So we're having roast beef, we've all decided. Steve got an amazing offer on a, a, a beef roasting joint. So it should have been about 15 quid and he got it for six. Because he's just that clever. <laughs> and it was one of them right place, right time sort of things. So I thought to make it easier on myself, I'll make my Yorkshire puddings this day, which is Thursday. And I'll just put them in the freezer. Then I've got two batches then. One for this weekend and one for the one after. And these are so foolproof. They're very easy. There's Dana over at um, Shorty Toll Family. She's used this recipe. Helen over at the Fathom Perfect Mum. She's used it successfully. Fiona has over at Fiona in her kitchen. Check them three ladies out. They've all used this recipe and it's been absolutely fine for their for them. Is just to, is to mix it 
until it's mixed and that's it just leave it alone as soon as I start this process I put my oven on and my oven will be on now right that's it I've just stopped and I'll not mix it again she says look this is because I'm putting it in the jug so it's easy to pour um so my oven's on it'll be preheating then I'm going to put my tin in with the oil and that's going to be in there for a good five minutes just make sure you put in enough oil that it covers the bottom of them muffin holes and you heat it up until it's hot and then the process of taking it out and filling the muffin holes with batter should be a safe but quick process so it's come out the oven I'm going straight in with the batter, no messing about and then get it straight back in. What you don't want is for that um, oil to go cold. They don't rise as well then. You have a tendency for sticking. And if you leave them a good five minutes too, when you've took them out, they shouldn't stick as much. And the older the pan, the better. The older pans are the best, I say. And that's it, 25 minutes. And they always come out. Always. They don't deflate. So they'll cool down and go in the freezer. That recipe as well will be linked. It's already on the channel. So this is the recipe for the one pot. One pot beef mince hot pot I keep slipping <laughs> how can you have something defrosting all day in the center of it is still frozen he my I know my house is not that cold so I'm gonna add in some fresh thyme I don't always have fresh uh, herbs, but while I've got them, I will put them in. So I just prepped all my veg, which took me 10 minutes. That's all it took. I'm gonna cook the mince off with the herbs. There we go, and now I'm going to start adding in, that is white cabbage, trust me you do not know that is in there, honestly, don't use Savoy, one of the softer ones, it just, it'd just be mushy, whereas the white, white cabbage it still holds that little bit of crunch. So there's onions, parsnips, about 250 grams of mushrooms and some chantonnay carrots that were left over as long as you've got onion and mushroom you can put what you like in I suppose and that pan looks like yeah nothing else is going to go in that but we all know it, it'll shrink down a pan with a lid or something you can put some foil over because this will go into the oven at some some point once this is cooked down a little bit would be preferable so that's all I'm going to do I'm going to put the lid on turn it down and I'm going to leave it 10 minutes see it's already gone down look So I'm putting in some Worcester sauce. I'm 
Yes, guys, yeast extract or marmite. Trust me. Honestly, just trust me. So that is a rounded teaspoon. It will melt off your spoon if you just let it warm up. I cannot stand marmite, guys, honestly. So if I can put this in here through choice, you know it's not going to be overly noticeable. But it does add some. The same with the um, sausage and potato pie that I made. The gravy in that was so good. So, heaping tablespoon of plain flour. Give that a couple of minutes so you cook it out. Season to your own taste. I've used a low sodium, good quality beef stock. And it's 500 mils. I think I added about maybe another 50 to 100 mils of water later on in the cooking process. Just so that when it was in the oven it didn't dry out. You see how dark that is, look. <laughs> or maybe that 50 to 100 um, mils you could substitute for a bit of red wine if you like red wine. It's entirely up to you. I don't like wine in cooking, especially red. But again, that's a personal thing. You might love it. You might even like it so much that, never mind the dinner, just give you the bottle of the red wine. <laughs> so, now. These potatoes, you can see how thin they are. And you're just going to go round... Please don't cut these over thick. That one looks thick. <laughs> but majority of them are not. That's where I was coming to the end, basically, of the potato. You can see by the others that they're quite thin. So this is still simmering away. You're going to put your row of potatoes on and then brush them with butter. I was getting all confused with myself here. <laughs> brush them with butter, bit of seasoning, put the lid on and then put it into the oven. So essentially you're going to steam these. I didn't when I cooked this, I left it as one layer, but I would suggest once these are cooked, add in another layer, to be honest. To bulk it a bit more. Or you could leave it as this. There was nothing wrong with the way it was. I mean, because we did have a bit of tender stem on the side, so it needed using up. The tender stem wasn't actually part of the recipe, but, you know, why waste food? So just drop some butter on. Lid on, into the oven. I'd say give it half an hour with the lid on. Now I've took it out, look. At this point, these potatoes are cooked. And what I'm doing is just going over with the butter, butter again so I can brown them. But I, I would add another layer. I think looking back, yeah, I would add another layer. Repeat that process. You can see that bit of tender stem that we had left over. Look. But it must be a thin layer. And then just to repeat the process. Add the butter. And then crisp them up at the end. But this was so nice. Steve really enjoyed this. Sh 
Shame you can't get it out looking pretty. <laughs> And that was the tender stem, just a little bit of tender stem on the side. And there you go. That is my minced beef one dish hot pot. Hope you enjoyed this week's Day in the Life of the Kitchen. And I'll speak to you down in the comments. Bye.